Hello everybody, welcome back to Path of Nostalgia, um, the video series where I look at children's TV from yesteryear. Today I am looking at Nog of the Nog, going to buy the infamous Oliver Puskid, the late Oliver Puskid, and was released in 1971, I believe. So Nog of the Nog, it's basically to do with a king slash knight, um, basically involving his adventures in his own kingdom and around in far in far lands and various places around in this sort of like um, sort of medieval type of uh, type of world that he lives in. Um, obviously, he is he's basically like the king. He is he basically looks at the civilians as well. He become, he's basically like a hero to them. He has a family. He's got like a wife and child. Basically, got basically to say he defends his own kingdom from this guy called Nogbad. Nogbad. Yeah, Nogbad the not bad, the bad. I think that's the name of the villain that is. Uh, who basically lives in a big dead tree that he lives in. Um, sort of like similar to a Viking, very much. He he basically just has, uh, has like a well, like a sort of like a Viking type helmet that he wears, and he plots against you know destroying or taking over uh, Nogin's kingdom, very much. In a way, you can think of it as like over like um, I think I think it's stuff like if you defend your kingdom, it's a bit like Masters of the Universe, it's like an early prototype Masters of the Universe, because you've got the the hero itself, he defends his kingdom very much and goes on fighting, and you've got the other one is after all the power and stuff, you know, like the source of power that he's after. I find it kind of a little bit similar to that, really. Though I sort of knew I sort of Masters of the Universe. I'm going off topic a little bit, but it's sort of, it's a little bit relevant because obviously. He man protects his castle, Castle Grey Skull has all this power that he has, like he depends on power, and obviously Skeletor's after it very, very much to have the power to himself. That's sort of that's sort of a little similar thing, and yeah, and, and obviously other stuff that intends to um happen, you know, like goes out, you know, fights dra fights dragons in a some in a sort of like fairy tale type of way. And yeah, it's kinda of interesting. So obviously an, an interesting fact, interesting fact about the show. An interesting fact about the show is that it's based on uh, books. I think Oliver Postgate actually wrote the books first and before making this t television series, and it's basically it just basically comes from the books and just annotated n uh, nicely. The animation why animation wise is actually quite good. It's a bit, the animation's a little bit jerky and it's pretty it's okay. It's not bad, I would say. And it's yeah, it's of it's a little bit clunky there, but it's like early seventies animation, so sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. You know, it has a little bit of flaw strip, but it's it's all right. It's quite nostalgic for British people, uh, British people, and yeah. Um, color wise is quite interesting. Um, it's not in black and white by any means, it's all in color, faithfully colorful, same as like a knife at the engine, and you know, it's all brings out the color. However, the color is a bit muted. It's got this sort of, sort of like semi muted style to it, which is so sort of, it's so sort of relevant to medieval England in much. However, you think of children's Pokemon, it needs to be bright and colorful, especially in the 70s, very much. Like, you need something that sort of stands out. Though it did stand out, it's so sort of, color wise. Mm, it's all right. So, how do I get into Nog and Nog? Well, first and foremost, I like with some other shows. I used to like like, like with Bagpuss and I have the engine. They were, I used to watch on repeats. I did back in the day when they repeated them on TV and lots of other stuff. Nog and the Nog was never one of those actually. Um, so I haven't got a clue who Nog and the Wa Nog and the Nog was until about 2012 when I was researching stuff for a college project project through Charlotte Studies. To do with a creative type of thing that me and the group we were doing, we were busy making our own fiction, media, books very much. And I was looking for inspiration and I was looking for some stuff, a lot of stuff I used to watch as a kid and, you know, like, gain ideas, but also looking at some other stuff I'd never seen before. Knock on the Knock was one of those. And to me, he's an interesting character. The way he looks is fantastic and... Style wise, it's quite, it's good, you know. It's all obviously it's animation wise and it's adapted from books, but it has a nice style to it, which is quite good. Um, when I, when I watched it for the first time, I thought 
It's all right. It's in the it's sort of in the same vein as either the engine. However, it doesn't involve a train driver, a train, or setting like on a present day railway very much, or in more like sixties type railway. And it takes it back to the past into in this sort of like interesting landscape. It, it does, and I probably think it is suitable and memorable and a little bit different because I think when you look at stuff like involving knights and medieval history and stuff like that, it's not very present most time. I think. Some maybe one or two shows have done that recently, in sort of the twentieth, twenty-first century. However, back in the twentieth, it's sort of it's self hinted a little bit in the twentieth century in stuff like Mister Ben, when he goes as a knight in the very first episode of his show, he goes back to the Middle Ages, um, medieval time or Middle Ages, medieval times very much, and Fence of a Dragon he does. Whereas with this one, it takes entirely in medieval England, it does all, all in I think. It's in medieval, medieval England, or it is. Yes, I probably think so. So, mm -hmm. so it's it's very nice. To see, it's in, it's it's basically saying that in that um, era very much, like that sort of time period, which is quite good and fascinating very much. Um, Musical wise, it's all. To be honest, the music's not very that all exciting. It's not. It's not like um, it has like a little flute intro, like a faint sort of like flute intro in, in the sort of beginning of the tarot card, however, it doesn't really set the mood of the, of the show very much. However, I think it all plays sort of okay in, in when the episodes begin going, which is alright. And I think that's all I can say about it now, yeah. So, that's the uh, nostalgia review of this interesting show. I've been talking about Nog and the Nog, created by the late author Postgate. And, as always, I will see you for the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.